major support for Able to Learn Air. Green Mountain Support Services to empower neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Major support also includes Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Allah Israel, all people, no limits. Welcome to this edition of Able to Learn Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. And before we begin our program today, which is a very informative program with Downstreet Community Development, we would like to thank our sponsors, uh, sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and uh, Ala Israel. Uh, we would like to thank Mike Rama of Downstreet Community Development for joining us um, on this edition of Able Down on Air. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having joining me. us. What are the missions and goals of Down Street Community Development and uh, your history, that type mm -hmm. of thing? Yes, yeah, certainly. So uh, Down Street is a private nonprofit affordable uh, housing service provider. Um, pretty much our mission is to foster social justice and an effort to create collective prosperity for all. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do that through the power of housing. So we oversee all of central Vermont. That includes Lamoille, Washington, and Orange counties. Mm -hmm. um, and we provide affordable rental uh, opportunities to individuals and families. We steward um, single family homes to keep them forever affordable, regardless mm -hmm. of the market trends out there. Uh, and then we also provide homeowner uh, and home buying assistance programs, education, down payment mm -hmm. assistance. Um, well, and financial down guidance. Payment, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Down payment assistance. Because uh, I remember when we were first getting our apartment situation uh, situated, um, Capstone Community Action helped us with the down payment. So, uh, for like rent for the first time. So, explain how you guys do it. Certainly. So, the down payment assistance that I was mentioning is geared towards uh, home buyers. Mm -hmm. So not from a rental perspective, but from a home buyer perspective. And mm -hmm. we, um, due to the funding uh, that we have at our disposal, uh, every year we have a handful of um, uh, vouchers, let's call them, that we can give to eligible home mm -hmm. buyers. Mm -hmm. and, and it's up to 20% uh, of the value of the home that we can assist in down payment. And I believe it's mm -hmm. up to $20,000 mm -hmm. in total. That doesn't include, wait, so you said home, but if it's a rental, it's it's for uh, like a, a home that you would be buying rather uh, than renting. Uh, yes. So um, I know Vermont has situations like um, uh, trailer park situations, mobile homes, such yep. and such. Yep. Or do you guys help with that at we all? We do. So we uh, I want to say that we. We steward and oversee five mobile home parks across mm. central Vermont. Wow. Um, uh, four or five, I'm, I'm not, uh, don't quite recall the exact number. Uh, and how that works is um, we oversee the land, we own the land, uh, and we rent out the land to the uh, mobile home owner. Uh, and so we keep the property up, all the infrastructure, mm -hmm. all of the tenant, you know, or mm -hmm. homeowner relations, we oversee all of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, we understand that on Friday, you guys have yeah. uh, a huge event that's happening, um, which is um, opening of the new Taylor Street Apartments. Yes, sir, and, and the, the transit center. And yeah. the, trans the GMTA. So how, how have you, how how does Downstreet or how have you with Downstreet um, worked with GMTA within this? So what is our role? So we, uh, in addition to being a housing services provider, we are also a uh, developer. Uh, and that's one of the very unique characteristics uh, that sets us apart from many other organizations and nonprofits in the area is that we develop housing. Uh, and so we are one of the co-developers along with our partner Housing Vermont mm. uh, and we have co-developed the Taylor Street Apartments and Transit Center. Uh, the city of Montpelier also played a very critical, crucial role. How so? 
uh, in regards to the transit center, um, they own all the land and um, they are the ones that will be, uh, in addition to Green Mountain Transit, will be overseeing the transit center itself. So, And they've also, and I need to just say that the city of Montpelier has kept this project moving along. The project dates back to the 90s when it was originally first discussed. Why, mm. did, it, why did it take so long? Uh, there, that's a you know complicated question. Um, there are a lot I'm of. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're good. There are a lot of different pieces. Um, there was some mediation that needed to take place with, uh, with, with, um, you know, uh, toxic materials in the soil and yeah. the parking lots. So that took many years, and it just. To be honest with you, these development projects take time. Uh, for another example, French Block Apartments mm -hmm. yeah. on Main Which Street in Montpelier, yeah. we also uh, co-developed and we currently manage. And if you recall, the French Block Apartments, which is the largest commercial real estate in all of downtown Montpelier, was vacant for nearly 80 years. Yeah. So we, um, we redeveloped and, and re rejuvenized the, so that, that property. That yeah. building was vacant? Uh, the top um, oh, two to be, stories to above Abishan's. Yeah, it used to be a restaurant there. Uh, and originally was housing, yeah. yeah. And that project was 10 years in the making. Wow. So, and, and that's one of the things that a lot of people tend to not understand, and they think the project starts when the when the shovel gets in the ground, but quite frankly, it could be many years before I, I that. I can remember before. them doing it. I can remember yeah. that. Yeah, uh, um, <clears> all right, let's high. talk um, applications for a minute. Sure. And the application process. Let's say someone, okay, now Taylor Street is 30 apartments? Correct. Correct? When we spoke on the phone prior to this interview, you it told me that there was 19 apartments that were um, uh, based on income. Correct. Or something. Yep. What is the definition of market rate uh, when you're going into applications? Sure. The difference between 30% of your rent, uh, income and then market rate? Yeah, so good question. And and I'll use Taylor Street uh, uh, specifically. So for Taylor Street, 30 uh, apartments. Mm -hmm. uh, 19 of them are um, income restricted uh, based on your income, the household income, as it relates to the average median income of the area. Mm -hmm. And so for the 19, your income needs to be 60 percent uh, or lower of the average median income. Okay, 60% uh, median. Right, what? right, right, right. 60% right. of, of, of the typical median income yeah. of the area. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that number offhand, right. um, but it, you know, for one person, um, average median income might be $40,000, let's say. Right. So then your income, in order to be eligible for those 19 apartments, needs to be 60% of 40,000 or right. lower. Mm -hmm. And then so your question around market rate, market rate is our way of uh, just kind of <laughs> categorizing um, those types of apartments. But right. our market rate for uh, Taylor Street is 80% to 120% average median wow. income. Mm -hmm. So if, again, 40,000 is the, is the AMI, average median right. income. Mm -hmm. You can be between 80% of that number or 120. So you could make more than the average median income right. up to 120%. Mm -hmm. That then, that's for the 11 um, As a now apartments. which, okay, so you, Down Street deals with French Block. You deal with Taylor Street coming up. Yeah. Uh, where else within Montpelier area do you guys um, well, so we, uh, Montpelier, um, uh, I don't recall the number offhand, um, but we have 140 apartments in Montpelier. Wow. 20% um, are market rate. Does that include, does that include Taylor Street? Coming it does, up? it yeah. does. Um, but we are now restricted just to the capital area. So uh, mm. our service area is across central Vermont, Lamoille, Washington, and Orange counties. Mm -hmm. uh, and per, a ma large majority of our uh, property portfolio exists in Washington County with the exception of uh, 
uh, Bradford. We have several apartments, uh, I think 80 apartments in total uh, mm -hmm. in, in the Bradford region, wow. and that's in Orange County. Mm -hmm. The rest are in Waterbury, Williamstown, uh, Waitsfield, Warren, Barrie, Montpelier, yeah. um, uh, Callis, um, yeah. uh, and uh, so that's yeah. that's in terms of our properties, wow. which are about 50, more than 50 in total that we wow. steward. Mm -hmm. uh, and so quite frankly, we oversee over $70 million of property value wow. across mm -hmm. central Vermont. Um, that doesn't mean we have $70 million in the mm -hmm. bank. If yeah. we did, totally different story. Right. But yeah. we're a nonprofit. We operate as, as best and efficiently as we can. And, um, and uh, but that's where our, our, our properties are and our services span across mm -hmm. all three counties. Cool. Because how Vermont works is in the affordable housing space, the, there are different regions where um, our counterparts, Champlain Housing Trust, Twin Valleys, Rural Edge, mm -hmm. uh, Wyndham and Windsor, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, and others, <laughs> they have different areas of the state and we have mm -hmm. central Vermont. So. Mm -hmm. Um, question, as far as homelessness is concerned, you know, we understand that there's um, Good Samaritan helping out the big picture. Um, um, if someone is homeless, mm -hmm. right, or about to be homeless, do they get priority in your developments to make them not homeless anymore? Or is there a rule? So we, um, so in, in regards to this question, we we work with Good Samaritan Haven, as you mentioned, Family Center for, for Washington County, Washington County Mental Health, Capstone, Good Beginnings of Vermont. Mm -hmm. I mean, the amount of partners that we work with are are seemingly endless, um, uh, and we don't necessarily give priority to individuals um, like it's not you apply and you automatically get bumped up but what we do do is uh, we have a, a rating system that we utilize that if you are a family of five who are homeless versus you know maybe you're just an individual who's looking for an apartment but you're living in one now right. there is a there is a sense of urgency to the family of five who's living on the streets and so we work with all of our partners to figure out what is the best course of action for mm -hmm. all of our applicants, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because quite frankly, everyone right. tends to have something, right? Yeah. Is dealing with some root cause of, of challenges and struggles that they're going through, whether it might be domestic violence, whether it might be substance use disorder, mental health challenges as well. Um, and when you speak about homelessness, it's also looking at the root causes. Yeah. Um, housing is certainly uh, a solution. What do you mean by root causes? So those those that I mentioned, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's not just a, a, a financial uh, um, issues that cause people to be, to be homeless. It's quite often yeah. other root causes like domestic violence, mental health, you know, substance use mm -hmm. disorder, um, the list goes on. Um, and we, work with our partners to tackle those root causes at the heart because that's the only way we're going to ever stop homelessness. Since you said, since you said that, <clears throat> there's a situation where they're supposed to get rid of homelessness within 2020 and that's why a lot of these um, apartments are popping up. Do you think we'll ever get rid of homelessness within Vermont? We're trying hard. I, but. Hey, I, I remain um, optimistic of that. Uh, it is not, unfortunately, a technical challenge, um, and there's no technical solution. Housing is part of, uh, of the solutions, but it's going to be multi-layered, mm -hmm. many different um, vast array of services and approaches to be taken to, to end homelessness. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I can just speak from, from Down Street's perspective. Uh, again, we, we have a strong commitment to assisting those who are, are experiencing homelessness, who have in the past, I believe 18% of our entire portfolio. So we, uh, we provide homes to about 820 residents. 25% wow. of them are children. 
and at 18 percent of all 820 previously experienced homelessness before mm -hmm. they got into our permanent housing mm -hmm. so we we are dedicated to helping solve this this troubling uh, challenge that we all face in this community besides the Taylor Street thing that's happening Friday is there any huge things that are happening with Down Street now any that, exciting yeah a lot of exciting stuff. Go ahead. A lot of exciting stuff. Well, I'll just plug one. Um, we just released a brand new website. Very informative. Uh, much easier to navigate through. And um, I would I would direct everybody to go to that. We have a new blog. We're going to be providing a lot of mm -hmm. helpful tools for financial health and wellness and um, how to thrive in your you know rental space and so on and so forth. So check out the website, downstreet.org. Um, for more information um, and in terms of exciting endeavors you know one thing that uh, I can say that that I'm quite proud of uh, with my colleagues and I um, at Downstreet we we're, we're not just staying with you know the traditional approaches to housing because ultimately we do great work our partners do great work but housing remains to be a challenge here in, in our great state and so and, we and why is it a challenge um, many you know many reasons um, one need funding more additional funding um, you know ultimately construction is expensive you need more money to be uh, to have in order to create more housing and, and incentivize new yeah. developments and renovations mm -hmm. um, and it's also the cost uh, of housing and and the lack of infrastructure that it might exist for you yeah. know public utilities and works um, but something that we are we are doing, we are trying to be as entrepreneurial and as innovative as, po as possible. So we actually have a handful of pilot programs that we're working on today. Mm -hmm. uh, one is called the Neighborhood Housing Program. Yeah. It's an effort to revitalize blighted, you know, abandoned homes, fully renovate them and sell uh, them affordably to similar, families of similar modest to habitat, incomes. Similar, is, is that it's similar, similar to, to habitat? Habitat for Humanity, or I'm not I'm not quite as, as familiar with Habitat's uh, programs and services. Basically, they fit of uh, Habitat of Humanity to, uh, takes a home somebody has, or a home that somebody's <coughs> in, and comes and fixes and repairs stuff. Uh, yeah, it's it's similar to that, um, but we one approach that we're taking is to ensure that the renovations of the property make it so the total cost of the home is present when it is yeah, bought. Because right. quite frankly, uh, particularly with, with Vermont, when a lot of, large portion of our homes are some of the oldest in the country, right. um, when you buy a home, three years later, you have a big expense you weren't expecting uh, right. because the heater broke or what have you. Right. So when we renovate these homes and sell them to families of, of modest means, um, we are guaranteeing that they have at least 12 years before they ever have to make any capital improvements to the property. Wow. Which is, uh, when you think of in terms of financial wellness, that's a big deal. Because that allows you to see exactly yeah. what your expenses are going to be and be able to budget and plan accordingly. Right. And we work with those families to do that. So that's one pilot project that we've, we have currently going on. Uh, another is the Residences for Recovery Initiative, less of a, uh, a pilot but more of a statewide effort that we are that we have started and are leading to to accelerate the development of recovery residences for individuals and families struggling and recovering from substance use disorder. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, substances meaning drugs and alcohol. Correct. Um, mm -hmm. Opioids would mm -hmm. be would be a mainstream um, item today. Now, a big question. I mean, I mean, we can. Extending this question, but I think it's an important one. Yeah. Why are landlords afraid sometimes to rent to certain populations, like people with disabilities, etc.? Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, I I can't speak uh, to the actions and and um, 
perspectives of others. I just, I, I can't do that. Uh, I can, well, in your opinion. Sure. I'm just saying uh, opinion, I, uh, an opinion question. No, sure. And, and you know, from Down Street's perspective, we are a, a property manager. We're, we're a landlord, if you will, an affordable landlord with a mission, and we, we use that mission to guide every action we have. But, but we are um, overseeing properties. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, hey, I'll be the first one to tell you that there are times where some of our residents can be challenging to, uh, to house and, and work with. Yeah. Um, and I think that's just, you're bound to have that. Uh, but again, we, we, we are fundamentally committed to connecting people to the resources and services mm -hmm. that they need to mm -hmm. thrive. That's because the point. we don't okay. believe, we do not believe that four walls and a roof is enough. No. That's no, not where housing not. should end. Mm -hmm. do, do you make your apartments accessible? Uh, yes, and and if they're not, then they need to be. We we make that we make changes. So that's one thing. If if someone has a, um, a disability or if someone has a need that the apartment um, uh, does not offer, we work with them to either get them into an apartment that does offer that, or we make the commitment to what's, to. What's Mm. So, what the, oh, the, the, the wheel? Um, the what? The wheel something. What's the name of that thing? The add on to the. Uh, oh, um. Uh, wheel, uh, uh, like, do you, would you guys mm. provide uh, like bars in the bathroom? Certainly. Shower chairs. Certainly. And different things like that. Yeah. Um, may I may I add on just yeah. to a few of the other exciting things that we've got going on? Go ahead. Um, so in addition to the neighborhood housing program and also residences for recovery, uh, which I'll just say with that, that initiative came uh, from a call of action from the Opioid Coordination Council that the Governor Scott appointed back in 2017. Mm -hmm. We commissioned a study and found that there's, there's roughly 200 beds uh, for people in recoveries from substance use disorder that are available today, but the need is about 1,200 beds. There's a massive gap. And so that we, is a massive gap. Pretty massive gap across the state. And so we, again, are leading this initiative. We're bringing uh, all of our partners and uh, affordable housing service uh, 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 affiliates together and also service providers together and, and bringing them to have a conversation and then to accelerate the development of these recovery residences. Mm -hmm. We've added three and our goal is to add um, 12 total by the end of 2020. Mm -hmm. 12. So 12 new recovery residences that mm -hmm. together, you know, by the, um, they Re range anywhere from six to 10 so, people per so, home. So if, if, if that's a recovery, a recovery residence, how would the <laughs> rent be uh, paid yes yeah, so that's or no we're still working on that and that's one of the complexities of this um, this is a fairly new uh, it, it's a new approach to housing that that we affordable housing providers have never mm. had to do uh, so that was why we took the torch oh, this is and a new ran area with it. this is a new area new area and so downstreet has taken the role across the state to to kind of pioneer and accelerate the development by by f figuring out all those questions and and offering solutions like a turnkey model mm -hmm. to our partners. Mm -hmm. So that's another exciting thing that we're working on. And and I'll add two more. Um, we are also we're good. Um, we are also uh, have we have a pilot program um, around tiny homes. Mm -hmm. I heard about that. Yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. So we we have partnered with Washington County Mental Health and also Norwich University to design and build uh, two tiny homes uh, that will be uh, designated towards individuals who are struggling with mental health um, challenges. But wouldn't, so, a, wouldn't a, a tiny home, I mean, it would be, it, it, so it's smaller than this studio here? Uh, I believe the ones that we've have, we have designed and, and are creating are about 460 square feet. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm assuming you're getting that... Uh, Size-wise. Size. Wouldn't, wouldn't it bother... Okay, if someone's claustrophobic, they wouldn't go into... Certainly, and this is not a solution for everybody. And that's, that's a challenging thing around housing and, and um, meeting people what, where their needs are. Yep. Mm -hmm. But the misconception is that 
that tiny homes aren't going to work for everybody. Exactly. Whereas if you go to anyone in Washington County Mental Health, there is a large need for for homes uh, mm -hmm. like the like a tiny house right. uh, for individuals who are not able to thrive in a community uh, uh, home environment. Right. right. Like living in a rent uh, rental complex. Right. So. We have, we're working with them to build these. These are a pilot just to see how it goes. Mm -hmm. And the other factor of this, as I mentioned earlier, you asked about why is housing, why isn't there more housing? What's the diff what are the barriers? One of that is the cost to develop. And so our, our theory is we can, we can extend every dollar, every funding dollar by as much as three, four times, mm -hmm. because the cost of building tiny homes will be uh, a quarter um, or a third of that of a typical rental apartment. Yeah. So that's our hope, and then as a result, we will distribute all of our findings right. and to all of our partners to try to, you know, build up and bring new solutions to tackling um, our housing The last thing, because uh, we understand that, okay, Barry, you guys have Keith Avenue, that big. Yep. Building. Yep. Our headquarters are in downtown Barry. Right. So, can you describe a typical? Let's say, so you have studio apartments that, that are available, one bedroom, and on from there, or or how, how does how, it how many work? Bedrooms in, do how you many have? bedrooms in the apartments? Are you, you are you asking specifically downstreet apartments or yeah, in downstreet? Yeah. 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 How, how when, when, when someone fills out an application, yep, right. How many? How is many it studio, one bedroom, two bedroom? Go ahead. Uh, it de it depends on on the property. So Taylor Street, uh, there are studios, there are one bedrooms, and there are two bedrooms. Yeah, right. Um, and for Down Street Apartments, I believe there, uh, which is where our headquarters are, we our first floor are offices and a community space that anyone can rent out. Yeah. Uh, and then we have three floors of, of housing and 27 apartments above our offices. Mm -hmm. I believe there are studio and one bedroom apartments there. So it, it does depend on the property um, and, and the project itself, but uh, I, I believe the most is a, a, a three bedroom Mm -hmm. um, but I'm I'm not I'm not confident that that okay. is fully correct. Well, we'd like to thank you for joining us. Certainly, thank is you. Is there for anything else me. that you want to mention that we haven't? I guess I'll just mention again. Um, check us out on our on our website. Um, That's www.downstreet.org. Dot org. Yep, okay. Downstreet D O W N <coughs> Street S T R. E E T and Easy. and lastly, I'll just also mention <coughs> if anyone's tech savvy, um, they can text the word downstreet to the number three three seven 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 to join uh, our e uh, electronic newsletter and join mm -hmm. the conversation and stay up to date in all the good work that we do, uh, including projects and events like the Taylor Street celebration this Friday from four to seven. Um, yep. And is there a number that people can reach you at, or the, the downstreet main number? Yes. That's okay. We can we can edit this out. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, yes. So, in if anyone would like to uh, uh, stop in, our address is 22 Keith Avenue in downtown Barrie, and they can always call us um, at our direct line of 802 47 Six four four nine three. Okay, so that number is 802-476-4493, www.downstreet, that's D-O-W-N-S-T-R-E-E-T dot org. And Perfect. again, thank you, Mike Rama. And your title is? Uh, I'm the Director of Advancement. Okay. We'd like to thank Mike Rama and the whole Downstreet team for letting us um, be part of the for, for them letting um, them being part of this half hour of able to on air and we will be there uh, by the time this airs Friday will have already passed sure and you have will have already seen this and continue to see it um, again if you want to contact us and see more um, able than on air you can go to www.orca media that's o r c a M E D I A dot net. And uh, we would like to thank our sponsors, um, Washington County Mental Health, 
of Green Mountain Support Services and Ala Israel. Again, this puts an end to this edition of Label Dead on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you next time. Major support for Able to Learn Air. Green Mountain Support Services. To empower neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Major support also includes Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Allah Israel. All people, no limits.